Hey guys, Chelsea from Attention to Details. Welcome back to the channel and today in the shop we have this Ford F-150 Super Crew and we are getting this ready for, well, I don't know what we're not getting it ready for. We're doing an interior detail, we're doing an exterior wash, chemical decon, clay bar treatment, then we're going to do a paint enhancement, we're going to be applying a graphene coating to the paint, we're going to be putting a glass coating on the front windshield, we're going to be doing a tire coating and wheel face coating as well. Uh, we're probably just going to throw in there an engine bay detail just because from head to toe everything will be clean and so that's great for the customer. We're also going to be cleaning the Tanu bed cover and cleaning the back of it out. I'm already tired just saying everything that I need to do. It's going to be a very long day. I actually already vacuumed the inside out. It was a quick process. It took maybe about an hour and a half. We had some minor issues on the inside with some sticky dash. I'll share a quick tip on how I went about addressing that, but the interior is pretty straightforward. I'll show you guys a little bit of the products that I used to clean an interior dress, but I did a poll recently on my channel asking you guys what kind of content do you want to see more of? And a lot of you, the overwhelming response was that you want to see more start to finish details and the products that I use. It's a little bit more work for me, but I think it's going to be great educational purposes for you guys just to kind of see some of these products up close uh, in use. And so we're going to go ahead, show you a quick look of what the vehicle looks like before and get right into it because it's going to be a long day and I've got soccer practice tonight, so <laughs> no rest for the weary. Let's get into it. So here's the before condition of our F-150. It is, again, heavy pollen season here in Lancaster, and you can see we've got a good layer of pollen. It's kind of sat outside in the rain. Even our front grill, which is a matte material, we can't do any sort of polishing work on this, so we have to be very intentional with how we clean it and also how we coat it. There's a lot of the tight honeycomb grill, and it's just pretty faded. So I'm going to share with you guys a technique and product that I use to give really nice results on this grill. Up next are our tires, wheels, and wheel wells. The wheel wells are pretty straightforward. Our tires and wheels, since we are getting them ready for coating, we have to take a little bit of a different approach than I typically would for just a standard full detail. These wheels were pretty bad. They looked completely matte, and after I cleaned them, they actually had more of a satin appearance to them. You can see one area where I kind of wiped off some of the dust, what it looks like underneath, but these tires were some of the worst that I've cleaned in five years. I'll share with you guys the drastic transformation at the end and how we got those results. For our painted surfaces, it is pretty straightforward with our contact wash, chemical decon, clay towel treatment, getting it ready for our paint enhancement step. Now the customer was only paying for one step, and because the paint on this actually had a good bit of oxidation, a dull appearance to it, I'm more so approaching it to replenish the polishing oils to the paint to clean it up go after about 50% of the swirls and scratches. So I'll share with you the product that I use on the paint, our truck bed and our truck bed cover. I'll share with you guys some quick tips on getting really nice results there. When it comes to our interior, we had some issues with sticky dash. I'll share with you the before conditions. You can see it needed just a really good vacuuming. We used our detail brush to suck up all of the detailed sections, but let me share with you guys how I address the sticky dash. So I apologize that the footage is a little rough. It was cramped inside the cabin, but I wanted to show you an up-close look of what I was dealing with. You can see we've got a lot of dust stuck in the plastic of our dash. As I'm touching it, it's a little tacky to the touch. It's not to the point where we need to consider scraping some of that glue off or maybe replacing it. There are actually some Toyotas, some Lexuses that this was a recall issue because the glue as it broke down over time was rising to the surface and there was really nothing you could do unless you wanted to actually get like a scrub pad and scrub it off. But here we're in kind of a pre-stages of that sticky dash. I have an auto fiber scrub ninja that is wet. You can see I've got some moisture here. I have a quality APC. This is McKees 37 high intensity APC plus. We're going to allow the felt of the auto fiber scrub ninja and the water to really help us kind of scrub some of that off. You don't want to try to clean this with a dry rag. You don't want to use anything that is solvent based. A lot of times what can actually happen is if you're using the wrong type of dressings or cleaners, they can actually accelerate this issue. So avoid arm roll, avoid solvent based dressings that are really greasy, high to the touch. But come in with your Scrub Ninja, your APC, do a really good deep cleaning. When we come over with our dry rag, now we don't have any of that lint sticking to the surface. We've kind of been able to reset 
our front dash, remove that stickiness. And then now moving forward, the customer can use a water-based interior dressing. They can use maybe more like a UV spray wax even that's going to give protection but not leave behind kind of too much residue that's going to accelerate this issue. You saw our before, here's our after, just doing a thorough vacuuming using our detail brushes, drill brushes, removing the sticky dash on the front. I've done tons of videos on the past on how I address interior cleaning. So for the sake of not being repetitive, I'm not gonna necessarily show you guys all of that footage all over again. I am gonna actually share with you guys though a quick video after this on how I did a bonnet cleaning on these seats using Royal Reflections Aftermath Biohazard Cleaner. There was kind of a funky smell on this cabin, uh, kind of smelled like sweaty gym socks. And I could tell from where his kids booster seats had been, there was some light staining. So I'll share with you guys a quick tip on how to quickly clean seats and upholstery. We cleaned our plastics with Coach Kimmy Greenstar, did a video on that recently. And we'll also share with you guys how we address our door jams, getting nice clean results. But let's go ahead and get started. So a lot of times with to new bed covers, people are just going to wash it with their standard wash mitt and soap. I like to do a dedicated deep cleaning at least once a month to help prevent dirt from accumulating in the textured surfaces. I like to use Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Heavy Duty Vinyl Cleaner and the Auto Fiber Scrub Mitt. Now this is a larger version than the Scrub Ninja. These two combined do a great job of getting in all of the textured surface of the to new bed cover. They're not aggressive. They're not going to stain it. This works better than just using a standard wash mitt or wheel brush. It's going to give you deep cleaning results. And then once we're done washing and everything is dry, I like to protect with the Phoenix EOD Titan Ceramic Detailer. It does a great job of dressing, but it's not going to leave behind any sort of greasy residue. Because we're getting our tires and wheels ready for a coating, we want to make sure that we have a completely deep clean surface before we lock in their condition with the coating. So I'll get into the tires in a second, how I address them. You can see they're pretty bad. When it came to our wheels, we were using the Oberk 2-in-1 Wheel Cleaner, uh, as well as the Oberk Tire Cleaner. I did a video review on both of these products recently, so I'm not going to get into too much detail on them. They did a great job, especially the wheel cleaner, of deep cleaning these matte wheels and giving us that chemical decon that we need to help go after any sort of unseen bonded contaminants to prep for our coating. So our wheels were pretty straightforward with the 2-in-1 wheel cleaner, but our tires were a whole nother process. So I started off on the right side of the vehicle using the Oberk tire cleaner. It did a great job. I went three times around the tires, saw a huge improvement with the foam, and then went around to the left side. And you can see as I'm starting on this tire, again, it's almost melting the browning right off of the tire. Did a really great job of deep cleaning it. But as I was working on this tire, I went around to the right side of the vehicle where the tires had air dried, and I noticed they had an awful brown appearance still to them. So I had to continue to clean the tires and I actually went around every single tire almost 10 times before I had white foam and just a natural finish look to it once it air dried. The customer admitted to me after he picked up the vehicle that he has actually never once cleaned his tires. He's maybe just hit them with a soap and called it a day. At least once a month, you want to make sure that you are degreasing your tires with a dedicated tire cleaner and a stiff tire brush to help prevent that browning from building up over time. Because what can happen is if you're not cleaning your tires properly and you're just putting dressing over top of it, it's going to make it that much harder to remove the browning from your tire and it's just going to have a gummy appearance to it. So we went over everything. I actually ended up using the McKee 37 tire and rubber rejuvenator because I had their concentrate in stock and I was using my white drill brush. It did a great job of deep cleaning the tires. I was actually getting tired by the time it was said and done. So it kind of helped ease my back, my arms from having to scrub so vigorously. But you can see as we're going around the tire, our shade of foam is getting lighter and lighter. But by the time we were all said and done, it was 10 times around each tire, and gosh almighty, was I beat. But we finally have white foam. This customer better eat off these tires because they're about that clean. Let me show you what it looks like on the other side. They look like a raw undressed tire. You can actually see the tread and the tire 
are consistent as far as appearance. So you, we know we've removed the browning. We know we've removed the dressings. We've got a virgin strip tire. So I've done videos in the past on how I do door jams, but for those of you that might have missed them, I actually use Superior Products Dark Fury at a 5 to 1 dilution ratio. I'll spray all of my door jams with my chemical, and then using my Ryobi 1900 PSI pressure washer, my NB925 spray gun, and a 25 degree tip, I actually contactless blast all of that dirt right off. It gets built up grease and grime. It's going to blast out all of your drains along your door panels. It's going to help prevent rust from accumulating on those critical areas of your vehicle. You can even use it for gas caps. You can see there's like a black rim of residue around the exterior. And the Dark Fury does a phenomenal job of just removing it even without any contact. In the past, I used to use detail brushes and spend about 15 to 20 minutes to meticulously clean every single groove, but I found that this process is just as effective but more efficient because I can get this done in under 5 minutes. What little overspray you get on your plastics, you can just mop up with a microfiber, but it's all about efficiency and this does a great job. Even on our roof where we have kind of mildew starting to accumulate because the customer wasn't doing a contact wash, we sprayed with our Superior Products Dark Fury, rinsed, and it removed all of that for a safer wash. And this is why you wear safety goggles. And this is why I'm constantly buying new glasses because all the cleaners ruin them. But, uh, yeah. Fun times. So I've done tons of videos in the past on how I prep for ceramic coatings and my process is pretty much the same here. We're gonna do a high pressure rinse, then a foaming pre-soak, this time with Superior Products Dark Fury. So does a great job of loosening road film, bugs, tar, etc. We're gonna rinse that off and then we're gonna do a contact wash with McKees 37, their coating prep auto wash. This is a fantastic soap to prep for coatings. It can help remove old waxes and sealants and leave behind a squeaky clean surface. Now we're gonna do our chemical decon with AM Details Iron Fallout Remover, as well as our Ultra Clay Towel. I do one side at a time, so that way my product doesn't dry out, but this is a great way to efficiently, chemically, and mechanically decontaminate your paint all at once. We're gonna rinse all of that off, and then pull it in and dry it off. You wanna do a chemical decon and a clay towel treatment before you apply your coating, so that way your coating can bond effectively with your clear coat and not have anything in between. And now we're ready to polish. So we did our wash, our chemical decon, our clay towel treatment, and our paint is silky smooth now, but we still need to do a paint enhancement. Now the customer's only paying for a single step. I'm ideally hoping that we can do just one step to be able to correct as much as possible but finish down really well. Ford paint typically is medium. I would say it's that perfect paint to work on, at least in my experience. They can cut and correct very decently, but they finish down really nice. They're not super finicky like Chevy paint that you might have a haze left behind. So you can use something a little bit more aggressive, like a medium grade polish, and it's going to correct decently and finish down beautifully. But you can see we do have, uh, I would say, medium grade swirls and scratches. We do have some uh, random isolated deep scratches that kind of run the whole length of the car. It looks like maybe they brushed up against a branch or something. Now, I already did a 50-50 uh, test spot to test out. I'm working with the new Oberk Medium Polish Sole, and this is a new product that Oberk came out with. I've been using their Cut and their Polish. They're two separate products, and a lot of times, sometimes I will actually combine them on one pad to kind of give me that sweet spot for some medium paint. They came out with this product and I thought this would be the perfect test vehicle for it. Now you can see our paint is kind of faded and dull over here. This is our 50-50 test spot. It looks so good. It removed, I would say, 75% of the swirls and scratches with maybe three passes. I am using the new SPTA 18 volt 15 millimeter long throw. You can see we don't have any sort of cords. This is a brushless setup. I'm using the Oberk medium polishing pad. I did about six drops, three passes, maybe four max, and this is the end result. We have no haze, really nice reflection. The gloss that's coming off of this though, it actually transforms the color of this vehicle. It went from kind of like a pink color to a deep red. So I think the customer is gonna be really happy when he sees these results. Again, it's not paint perfection. When you're doing a one-step, 
sometimes you have to choose. Are you going to go for clarity or are you going to go for correction? But having a product like this, it can give you both and kind of land in that middle sweet spot to be able to give you decent correction. But we're not being super aggressive on the clear coat. We're not um, getting to the point where we're removing too much that it's going to have future issues for the customer. But what's left behind is a gloss that is just breathtaking. Here's a closer look at our hood. You can see kind of a dull stained appearance. After two or three quick passes, we have a beautiful finish left behind. Once we polished our roof and hood, now we're gonna move on to the front glass and get that ceramic coated so I'm not leaning up against it. We're using the Invisible Glass Ceramic Glass Coating. I just did a video review on how to prep and install this coating. It's extremely user-friendly. It's what I'm gonna be using moving forward for glass coatings. I'm gonna put the link for it down below for the sake of not being repetitive. You can see here the glass stripper does a great job of removing water spots, any protection that might be on the glass. So that way we have a squeaky clean surface. The wife was extremely happy about having this on the vehicle to have better visibility in the rain, but I highly recommend this product. I'm gonna put the link for it down below. Moving on to our tire and wheel coatings. I ended up going with a different product than what I had originally planned on using and I'm really happy that I used it because I was nervous about using a high gloss ceramic coating that you would normally use for paint because I didn't want it to alter the look or run the risk of high spots. So let me share with you what I ended up using. So the product we're gonna be using today is Meguiar's Hybrid Paint Coating. Now you might be scoffing saying that that's not going to be durable or last on these wheel surfaces. I have been speaking extensively with the person who helped develop this product for Meguiar's, Marcus Klein, and he actually did extensive R&D for Meguiar's in the real world with this product on his own vehicle. He applied it to his paint, and he also applied it to his wheel surfaces, and surprisingly, he told me that he saw close to 12 months of protection on his wheels with this ceramic spray coating. It's very underrated. It can last up to two years if properly maintained on a vehicle, and he claims up to 12 months on wheel surfaces or wheel coating. So I'm excited to do further tests on this product to see if this would be a quality option for many. Uh, I'm going to be seeing this vehicle every six months. Ideally, I told the customer bring it back for maintenance, but this was a stress-free application process for me. I didn't have any sort of high spots. It's an extremely forgiving coating. It didn't alter the look of it. It did add a nice satin finish to it. I could tell there was something it kind of enriched the color but it didn't put a gloss appearance to it the hydrophobics afterwards were very impressive unfortunately I don't have any shots of that because the customer came to pick up the vehicle before I could get that footage but again we will be seeing this vehicle hopefully every six months so we'll do an update for you guys on this wheel coating if this is a viable option so stay tuned but I was very impressed with how easy this was to apply how great it looked on the tire afterwards the customer was ecstatic with the end result. So Meguiar's hybrid paint coating on wheels I think is a great option to consider. So we're moving on to our tire coating. We're going to actually be using the Lone Star coating technology, their gloss tire coating. Customer wanted a glossy look to this. We thoroughly clean these tires. I've got gloves on and I'm actually using a combination of a microfiber applicator and a brush applicator. I picked this up from a Keys 37 this is how they recommend applying their tire coating. Very similar technology. 
I got some on my leg. I just coated my leg. It's okay. It'll come off. Hopefully. <laughs> just kidding. But that's why you wear gloves. So we've got our brush applicator, and that is going to be really nice for getting into our knobby tires, getting into all the nooks and crannies. You can see it goes on blue and it will dry clear. And our microfiber is going to be nice for this part here. We're just going to kind of do half of this tire together to show you what it looks like. We will move the tire or the vehicle so that we can get to all parts of this tire uniformly. I'm just going to flip to kind of our dry side. And that's just going to kind of help with any sort of uh, excess drips that you might have. You want to get those off before they dry. Knobby tires take a little bit more of a steady hand, a little bit more tension just to try to get any sort of drips or get all the angles dressed. This is our fresh application. This is an undressed tire. And we'll show you what it looks like when it air dries. We'll kind of leave this one a little bit 50-50 just to show you the benefits of coated versus uncoated tires. So here's our tire that we had kind of done a 50-50 or more like a 60-40. But you can see here is our uncoated tire section. It's kind of dull, faded. It's clean, but the natural appearance of the tire is just not that appealing. And then we have our coated section. We've got a nice gloss tire. It is dry to the touch. We're not going to have dirt, brake dust, stick to it. It's going to be easily maintained with soap and water. When the customer wants to reapply their coating, which it's very affordable, they can maintain it for themselves at home. They just want to do a light degreasing with the all-purpose cleaner or tire cleaner from Lone Star. It's a fantastic tire cleaner. Go over it until you kind of have white foam and then reapply your coating and it's as easy as that. So they're going to be able to fight browning, keep their tires clean, and looking fantastic for months on end with a very easy and affordable product. So that's a closer look at the Lone Star Tire Coating. Uh, I think the customer is gonna really benefit from having something like this. It's just, when you've got big tires like this, they can be a pain to maintain. So having a tire coating on them is gonna make things a lot easier for him moving forward and his truck is gonna look fantastic. So we're gonna finish coating the bottom part of this tire and move on to our paint now. For our front grille, it was very dull and faded from just sun damage. And I didn't want to, again, alter the appearance of our matte grille. So we are using the Meguiar's Hybrid Paint Coating and a foam paintbrush. I am spraying the foam brush over top of a microfiber applicator to reduce overspray. And just very intricately coming in, applying that to our grill honeycomb pieces. And then doing a quick level with my microfiber. It restored the finish, but it turned out really beautiful. I was very happy with how this turned out. Our front grill was transformed. The customer <laughs> was kind of speechless when he saw it because he didn't think it could look that good. And now when it comes to bugs and maintenance, it's going to be really easy for him moving forward. All right, guys, we are in the home stretch and we are finally ready to apply our ceramic coating to our painted surfaces. We're working with McKees 37, their new graphene ceramic coating. Now, I did a video on this in the past. I'm going to put the link for it down below for those of you that want a closer look or deeper dive into this product. But I'm just going to give you some of the bullet points here. This is single layer up to five-year durability claims. This is a graphene resin infused ceramic coating. There's no solids floating around with it, but you're going to have all of the benefits of of graphene in the chemical resistance, the less risk of water spotting issues. It comes in a four ounce bottle, so a little goes a long way. They recommend that you apply one panel at a time. Because it's graphene, it can be a little grabby if you let it sit on there for too long. But if you work one panel at a time, and we're dividing this larger hood into two, it's extremely user-friendly, almost stress-free to apply. You can see our light rainbowing effect. We're ready to buff off. We're going to come in with a low GSM microfiber 
gonna do some short circular motions for our initial level. Then we're gonna come in with a second fresh microfiber. Do your standard wiping off side to side. And then I always use a third plush microfiber for my final touch just to help eliminate the risk of high spots. But should you get high spots with this product, and I had one or two about 24 hours later, I just hit it with fresh product, it reactivated, it, immediately buff off, and you should be good to go. I enjoy working with this product immensely because it is a stress-free experience for me. I'm always looking for something that is gonna be user-friendly, but give my customers results that they're gonna be happy with. And so this is why I tend to use this product a lot. It's actually become a flagship here in my shop. So you might be thinking to yourself, this sounds like an awful lot of work and you had a lot of wardrobe changes in this video and that's because this was actually over a period of about three days from start to finish. I prepped it on Wednesday and then I worked on the tires, wheels, interior, and then the paint coating kind of in the evenings on Thursdays and Fridays after I had regular details. So this one was kind of exhausting just because I had some later evenings working on it, but the end result was something that I was extremely proud of. When the customer came with his wife and kids on Saturday to pick up his truck, the looks on their faces and the smiles that they had made all of the work so worthwhile. I wish I had videotaped their reaction because it was just so fulfilling, but not all of my customers want to end up on YouTube, but it made all of the work in the late hours just so worth it. That's why I love what I do, being able to take something that's kind of a diamond in the rough and to unveil its potential to show the customers that not only can it be a worthwhile investment worth maintaining, but that their vehicle can, in a sense, be a work of art. So while we do a final look at our interior and exterior, make sure you check the video description box down below. I'm going to put the links to every product that I use in this video for this transformation. For those of you that maybe you want to try them out for yourselves, for your own vehicles, or for your customers, make sure you also check. I have some coupon codes for you guys if you can save a little money. Uh, put those coupon codes down below for those of you that want to try them out for yourself But thank you guys for watching and staying tuned I know this was a longer video, but hopefully you enjoy content like this where we can share our products and processes to Maybe help take your detailing game to the next level But thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for future videos that we have coming out Enjoy this finished look at our vehicle and we will see you guys in the next detail